Please have a seat. Friends, this past year has been crazy, hasn't it? I've traveled all over America, and gun owners know there's far more at stake in this election than just left versus right. There's a growing belief that this is a do or die fight for the soul of our country. Because after eight years of dishonesty, corruption, and failure, the America we know is becoming unrecognizable. Everything we believe in, everything we've always known to be good and right and true has been twisted, perverted, and repackaged to our kids as wrong, backwards, and abnormal. Can you imagine growing up in a country where everyone from movie stars to the president tells you to be suspicious of police officers? Who are our kids supposed to respect and admire? The media tells them Bruce Jenner's a national hero for transforming his body, while our wounded warriors, whose bodies were transformed by IEDs and rocket-propelled grenades, can't even get basic health care from the VA. We have college campuses teaching that your freedom of speech depends on the conformity of your opinion. In this moral vacuum, we fear for our children's future and we feel our freedom slipping away. In times like these, Americans turn to the places they trust the most. For moral guidance, they turn to their churches. For mutual support, they turn to their families. And for a champion who will bring the fight to those who want to destroy our country, they turn to the National Rifle Association of America. We are the toughest, best organized, and most respected defender of American values. And tens of millions of our fellow Americans look to us for leadership. They're realizing what we've known for years, that dishonesty, corruption, and contempt for ordinary Americans, it hits a breaking point. And that breaking point is now. If we don't show up to the polls in force this November, we will witness the end of individual freedom in this country. That's not hyperbole, it's the truth. But the first thing we have to do is get together. Now is the time to unite. If your preferred candidate dropped out of the race, it's time to get over it. We all know people who won't be voting. We all know people who won't be voting. Here's one, Adam Brown, a hero who gave his life so we can live in a free country. We owe it to Adam and people like him to get off our rear ends and get in the arena. Now, were there differences between the candidates for the nomination? Of course. Are there valid arguments in favor of some over others? Sure. Will any of it matter if Hillary Clinton wins in November? No. Not one bit. Let me ask you a simple question. If you're at home and someone kicks in your door and tries to murder you and your family, should you have the right to defend yourself with a firearm? Yeah. I'm not talking about in your car, or at work, or McDonald's. And I don't care if your gun's an AR or a pump action shotgun or a revolver. I don't care if it holds 30 rounds or if it's a single shot. The question is, should you have the basic right to use a firearm to protect yourself from a murderer in your own home? Yeah. Friends, that question will be answered for all of us this November because the next president's first decision will be who to nominate as Justice Scalia's replacement on the U.S. Supreme Court. His majority opinion in the Heller case set legal precedent for what we've always known. Of course we have an individual right, and of course we have the right to use it to defend ourselves and our families. Thank God we won that case. We should have won it nine to nothing, but we won it five to four. And after Justice Scalia's death, we don't have five votes anymore. Our majority on the Supreme Court's gone. Justice Ginsburg says she looks forward to a future wiser court coming back and overturning our victory. It's that simple and it's that clear. The next president chooses the fifth justice, so the Second Amendment is on the ballot this November. I bet you're wondering where Hillary stands, right? 
Well, let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth. I'm sorry about that. That was the wrong clip. I apologize. Show the, show the next one. Here again, the Supreme Court is wrong on the Second Amendment, and I am going to make that case every chance I get, so I will need your help on that. The Supreme, the Supreme Court is wrong on the Second Amendment. Think about that for a second. The Supreme Court said you have the right to protect your life against a murderer in your own home, and Hillary Clinton says they got it wrong. That's how little she values our freedom and how little she values our lives. Here's what will happen if she gets elected. She'll put a radical anti-gun activist in Scalia's seat as soon as she can. The gun control groups will take a Second Amendment case to the Supreme Court where five justices will overturn what millions of Americans have fought and died to defend the basic human right of self-defense. And as soon as the ruling clears, states like California, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut will ban the manufacture and ownership of entire classes of firearms overnight. Every gun store in those states will be out of business. Every gun range will be shuttered. Hundreds of thousands of people will lose their firearms and lose their jobs. And as bad as that sounds, it's just the beginning. It ends with no right to own a gun in your home anywhere in America, period. Now, of course, the elites will still be protected. You know, for all their talk about the evils of firearms, they sure love their armed security, don't they? For 20 years, Hillary Clinton hasn't taken a walk, a nap, or a bathroom break without a good guy with a gun there to protect her. And as long as she lives, as long as she lives, she'll never have to dial 911. Yet she wants us to surrender our firearms and our freedom in return for a false promise of government provided security she will never rely upon herself. To Hillary, it's simple. She's special, and we're not. She's smart, and we're dumb. She wants us to live in a place where only law enforcement has guns and everything is free. Free meals, free health care, free education. Well, Hillary, that place does exist and you just might get to live there. It's called prison. If any of us had done what she did, we'd be in jail for a long time. But as dishonest and corrupt as she is, counting on Barack Obama's Justice Department to win this election for us is simply not a strategy. We have to defeat her because America can't survive eight years of her policies. Her tenure as Secretary of State will be remembered by ISIS rising and the world burning. Her willingness to turn her back on the heroes stationed in Benghazi should disqualify her from even being mentioned as a commander in chief. And her disgusting lie to the fallen heroes' families should permanently end her political career. But unfortunately, it hasn't. Friends, let me say this. Hillary Clinton has a legitimate chance to be the next president as long as people like us stay home, sit on the sidelines. And you know what? We're given a reason for optimism these days. She looks at all the discord and division and starts shopping, for online, shopping online for his or her twin beds for the White House. <laughs> so, My mother's here, sorry about that, mom. <laughs> so the next time your friends tell you they're not voting because their guy lost, tell them what's at stake. Ask them if they believe they have the right to use a gun in their home to protect themselves from a murderer because that's the question that will be answered for all of us this election. Every gun owner needs to know the truth about what she'll do as president. Please watch. I am here to tell you I will use every 
single minute of every day if I'm so fortunate enough to be your president looking for ways that we can save lives, that we can change the gun culture. Every single minute of every day. Here's a novel idea. Instead of spending every minute trying to take our guns, how about spending every minute defending the Constitution you swore to uphold? Or how about spending every minute trying to kill terrorists so they don't kill us? How about spending every minute taking the handcuffs off our soldiers from BS rules of engagement so they can get the job done? Or better yet, don't worry about it. Because from now until November, the five million men and women of the National Rifle Association will spend every minute working to make sure you never get that opportunity. You want to turn this election into a do or die fight over the Second Amendment? Bring it on. If you want to go, if you want to go in the inner cities and lie about gun control being the answer to violent crime, then bring it on. We'll tell them how your husband dropped prosecutions of federal gun crimes, how Obama followed suit, and how you'll do the same. You fight to give voting rights, voting rights to violent felons and crack dealers. We fight for the innocent people they terrorize. Hillary, you're a corrupt politician who will say anything to get elected. We're law-abiding Americans who tell the truth and aren't scared of you or anyone else. We love our country and the freedoms that make us great. And we're gonna fight for the America we believe in. But that fight starts right now. If we wait until November, we will lose everything. So challenge every gun owner you know. If they haven't joined the NRA, they need to join now. If they don't know what's at stake, they need to know now. This is a fight for our freedom. We're not subjects. We're the National Rifle Association of America. We're born to fight, we're born to do this. You wanna take our guns? Get ready, Hillary. Pack a lunch and give it a try. We've been here for 145 years. You know where to find us, and we're not going anywhere. Thank you very much. <laughs>